Hey guys, how are you doing? Before I kick this episode off with my moaning and droning gibberish that goes on for far too long, I need you to pay attention to this. Whenever you see Remember Kids Electricity Will Kill You, you need to pay attention. This is what people that were born in the 60s and before that like y'all. Yeah, I watch my demographic, trust me. This is what we grew up with here, right here. Uh, yeah, we had like kite and baseball and bat. That was pretty much it. And half the stuff was either used for assaults or it, it would liter literally get caught up in the power lines and kill you. So why am I giving you this warning? Well, we are back to working on the Giuliano junk pile, the Galliano. Yeah, those other people are in prison. The Galliano junk pile, straight out of the Sean Man Dude collection. You remember, um, I did an intro on this. That's up there, and there'll be a playlist. So everything that we do to this guitar is going to show up in that playlist. So. As discussed before, we are going to um, steam the neck off this thing. We've got a lot of body work to do. And we are going to hot rod this thing up. And it's going to be fancy to match this headstock. So, you're going to see a repeat of some stuff that we're going to blow through pretty quickly when it comes to steaming off headstocks. Let me get this guitar or it's not going to fall down because I would hate to have it crack or anything like that. It's already so full of cracks, I don't even know. The, the thing about this guitar is it's so beat up that you have to pull it apart, which makes uh, the tone bar and bracing repairs that I have to do really easy money. But um, if you've been watching this channel for any period of time, you know that I don't expect somebody that's going to buy one of these guitars, I know what's going to happen. Um, very first thing that always happens is you see one of these guitars, you're nostalgic, you buy it, it says good for slide, i.e. neck is breaking loose. And so you buy one and then the neck cuts loose because you put big strings on it. You put like a Bob Log, the third 56 thumper on it or a Reverend Peyton 60 as your thumb string. I just gave you a lot of information right there. Shh. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Anyway. And the neck cuts loose. And then you take it to a luthier. Even a, um, there's a sticker up there. What does it say? Yeah, a, um, right there. A YouTube certified master luthier even and they tell you well it's going to be four or five hundred bucks and you're like wow i paid 300 for this guitar which was way too much and then i got another five or so i got 800 into a guitar that's not worth but a couple hundred bucks so there's a method to my madness here if you've been watching uh, a long ways ago i did cigar box i did about everything you could do we made some uh, coffee can guitars, license plate guitars, but I've put out enough videos now where I think people are looking at these old arch tops and saying, okay, what can I do economically? So, rambling on and on. Oh, by the way, somebody said, I should call you Rambling Man because you ramble on and on. I said, well, sir, could you t please tell me what you don't know and what you want to know and what the time limit I have to teach you that is. And I find somebody to help you if I can't. Anyway, we had some other episodes about how to steam off a neck. And there's a one up there that goes into all the minutia of all that. But I taught you a couple of things. And one of them was how to steal uh, your grandma's teapot. Yes, this is 1964 easy bake oven avocado green you know it and make a neck steamer with a basketball inflator needle some 
a heat appropriate uh, hose and how do you like this check valve for when the steam gets out of control did i ever tell you about the time i was in a mud mixing shack on a drilling rig outside of arapaho oklahoma the rig come out of alaska it blew a steam line off because somebody used a hose clamp and not a steam clamp and like to take my head off the thing was flopping all over the place and uh at the end of its metal it was this big anyway i'm still alive yeah, God wanted you to hear me. That's right. We're going to use this in a minute. I'm keeping this close by. There's going to be some praying to do here. Anyway, I showed you how to make one of these. We're going to use this thing. In all seriousness, this will blow out before the steam blows up the pot, hopefully. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And then, most importantly... Once you pull a frat out, you're going to see all this in this video, so we'll blow through it fairly quickly. But you put the body in this restraint device. See this restraint device? Yeah, you know what? No. Uh-uh. You, right there. The apple, the ball, whatever that is. No, no. Get rid of it. This is a family channel. I don't need that. Once again, God bless you, that came on fast. But anyway, we steam the neck off, pop it loose, um, and then we'll go to work on the body. So why am I doing the neck first? Well, I've shown you that these bodies and these necks, if you take the top or bottom off, this neck is super sloppy. It's just the way these things are put together without one part the rest of them don't function well so we need the body and we'll steam this off so enough said let's get to work on the bench i'm going to give you very quick descriptions of what we're going to do we're going to learn how to find the uh joint where everything glues up we're going to figure out how to put a fret uh, pull a fret off without damaging everything too badly and then we'll finally steam up and get this off of here and then i'll talk a little bit about uh, the the why I want to take it off and what we're going to do once we get it off so we can see the end game as it's happening. So let's get to my bench and set up the autopsy looking down camera. Okay, we're going to go through a lot of material here pretty quick. And the first question you should be asking yourself is, why am I going to pull the neck off of this thing if it's not separated from the body? Well, there's a couple of things here. The bridge that will fit on here is going to be very small, short. Let me let me let me do it this way. I'm, again, I'm adjusting the camera angle. First thing is to figure out is where is the bridge going to go? Well, you go from the back of the knot, which is up there, and you go down to the middle of the twelfth fret, which is right there. And then you measure from the middle of the 12th fret and put that mark, and it is right there. Just a tad above the F hole. You see that? That's where my bridge is going to go. So I want to think about what kind of bridge I want to use. Well, arch tops, we use bridges that look like this. Maybe I want to use one that looks like this. Um, so what I need to know is, let's say I put this bridge here like this. I'm kind of putting it off to the side here a little bit because I'm going to take a straight edge now and go from the back of the bridge nut and lay it flat on the fingerboard and I want to see where this is going to end up on my bridge and you know what? It ends up about right there. That means I would have to trim off almost all of that bridge to get where I need to be. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steam the neck off. I'm going to take this part of the heel right here and trim it a little bit. And then I'm going to bring the whole neck up a little bit using a shim piece like this. 
You see this? It will actually go underneath here, and once we get this off, you'll see that the notched neck fits down into the body block, the head block, and then I can trim this and pitch it this way. So I want to end up giving my neck some pitch back down like this, which will bring this up, and then I support this here, and by putting that there, for an example, my elevation will come up like so, and suddenly my bridge fits underneath there. That's the trick. Now there are some things to think about, like if you do that, are your frets going to be okay? Um, and one thing I will tell you is these old guitars, the frets are very small and thin. Here's a couple that I've pulled. Notice they have tangs on them, those little bumps. So when you put these down, they want to go in, but they don't want to come out. So I'm sure I'm missing a lot of things here, but the fret right here, the 14th fret is right at the edge of the body. The neck pocket is going to be right here. So I'm going to have to drill holes right here and take the end of my steamer, which is a basketball inflator needle, and stick it in the holes where the neck pocket is, steam the hide glue, heat it up, and pull all of this off that way. Well, I can't do that through a fret. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to remove this fret. A couple things to think about there. First off, these are fret pliers. You notice they have a curve here. So if I squeeze them, it's going to want to grab the fret and pull it up. And then I just walk down like so and do this. You can't see. Until the fret comes out. Now, that can get kind of crazy. I'm missing a piece of something here I wanted to show you. But there's little spacers that you can put underneath this once you start getting it coming up and then you can put a shim under there and pull that up. But the first thing you need to remember is that they probably use some kind of a glue here. So guess what? I have a soldering iron that's heated up. And what I'm going to do is rather than put an iron on this, because I've used the iron before, I'm going to heat this up just by holding, and you'll notice that it's starting to get shiny with the heat. So I'm just going to put a little heat on there like that. Go back and forth a little bit until this is heated up enough where the heat goes down through the fret and gets to any glue that they've used there. Remember, these old guitars, they typically used hide glue. You want to think about using hide glue because tight bond, tight bond and glues like that are not very forgiving if you make a mistake. Where hide glue, you can heat it up. But anyway, I'm going to heat this up, and then we're going to use this tool to pull that fret. Okay, we're going to put our soldering iron back in its holder up here and now I just want to make sure a little bird told me that we're going to protect the top of the guitar here even though it's tore up from the floor but now we're going to take our fret nippers and here's those little gauges I was talking about ten thousandths and twenty thousandths you guys know I love the metric system because it's just easier but anyway so the idea is once you get this to start coming up you're not just going to pull and tug them out. You're going to walk down like this and get this curvature to pull up and pry the fret out. 
You don't want to tear it out. And you're going to get some chip out. Remember, these things have these tangs on them that are not going to want to come out without breaking out. So part of it is get the um, glue heated up if necessary. But we're just going to place this like so. And we're just going to... This is something you want to do with a lot of patience. Especially if you have somebody that wants these put back in because they're very thin and when they're bent up they're very hard to replace so sometimes when you're doing this you want to think about do I really really want to use these old frets or should I just refret this thing and the whole fretboard you notice I've got some good fret wire here let me get this popped loose okay so we've got this up a little bit enough where you can see that this shim will fit underneath there you see that it's actually straddling the fret and that lets us get a little bit more leverage as we walk down and pull this fret out there we go you notice it has a little bit of a radius to it. But most importantly, if you look here, there is some blowout there. And I'm going to want to put some glue on that fairly quickly so I don't lose this as I'm going through things. But we are going to drill a couple of holes right here to try to access the neck pocket right there. Okay, a couple things we want to talk about here. Um, the first thing is that the needle, the inflator ne needle is pretty big. You see it there? It's about as big as this. And I have a set of long bits that I can use. And I'm going to end up using a bigger bit like this. But until I know exactly where that neck pocket is, and I'm going to find it by drilling... I don't want to be going in there with big bits and, and tearing everything out. Also, I want to be able to stay off the edges because this is chipping out already. You can see that. But I'm basically going to take a very small bit and I'm going to drill inside that, that fret slot. You see that? And I'm going to probe this a little bit and see if I can get this to drop down in the airspace that's usually at the back of the pocket which would look kind of like this so everything is glued up into that joint but the back of this usually doesn't have glue on it so let's try and figure out if we can find where this drops in Now I can tilt it one way or one way or another. We don't want to be going through the fret board. We want to stay in the fret slot. So I can, if I don't feel it, I can come back and tilt a little bit. But I can just probe around until I feel it drop in. That actually felt pretty good right there. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my inflator needle and I am going to drill a series of progressively larger holes until that needle fits down into the hole I drilled. Okay, there we go. And the needle fits in. Not not so snug that nothing can get by it but there we go this is what we'll use to steam the neck off 
Okay, couple couple of hints. Don't forget to unplug the soldering iron that you were using to heat up the frat. Keep your frat marked just in case and be careful because some people want the stuff back. Now, I showed you how to make this jig. It's got a um, T-nut here holding this on. It's got a bolt on a on a on a T handle and basically we're gonna put the guitar into this and clamp this part goes underneath the heel of the neck right here so I want to get this all the way down here like so notice that this is padded with cork and this part here goes against the bottom of the guitar. This part here goes on the top, rides the top of the arch top, and has these wooden parts that we put these on. Notice that these have um, plastic tubing so we don't scrape up everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the guitar in here like so to where the heel of the neck is right over that. And then we're going to put, again this is padded with cork, we're going to put this over the top like so. You want to remember that this is an arch top. You want to crank everything down so tight that you break the arch top. But we're going to get this saddled up simply by using these wing nuts opening everything up and then sliding these on. And keep that plastic part that I showed you um, up against the body of the guitar. So let me get this tightened up here. Okay, before I put the last one on, this is again just a piece of all thread. Two big washers that sit on the outside of this uh, tab here. I cut the, all this out with a router and a, and a bandsaw. Pretty easy stuff. I've got wing nuts here and I've got thread protectors on the end. And again, this piece of plastic tubing protects everything. When I'm putting these on, I want to make sure that, again, understanding this is an arch top, I'm going to have a gap here in order for this to sit down tight. So what I want, what I really want to sit down snug is this part right there. This is what we're going to be prying against. So, Go around and make sure that everything is in its place. We don't want to shock something or something jumps in. It's like you'll see people running cranes and winch trucks. And instead of keeping everything spooled real nice, everything's a rat nest. And they pick up something heavy and then the line jumps and they, the line snaps. So keep just go around and tighten up everything just to the point where... When we heat this up, then we're going to turn this handle down here on this T-nut and push up. And as the neck heats up, as we apply steam into the joint, we will be able to tell when things are starting to cut loose. And we just wiggle the neck back and forth a little bit and turn this T-nut down here that you can't see. And the neck will slowly rise up. This is not something you want to force for sure. Anyway, let's fill up the teapot. And next thing you know, you'll see me working this neck loose. Okay, guys, let's stop for just a minute here. Oh, I know this completely disrupted everything. Don't worry, the therapy will fix it. But... I am going to do a little bit of Groundhog Day here because I have just shown you 
if you want to take off one fret and steam a knack, how to do that. But if you are going to change out all the frets on the fingerboard, oh, by the way, did I ever show you this? Number of holes. You number the holes. And then if you're reusing your frets and you pull off the 12th fret, you put it in hole number 12. Cheap. Easy. Mark off some dots. Drill them out. Yeah. You're welcome. Anyway. I have this on here. Like so, let me grab Chick Flick Teal Pointer. We're waiting for the teapot to warm up. But, you see this part right here? This is glued to the top of the body in some guitars. Now, if I'm going to change out all the frets, what I can do is I can save myself a little time here before I put on the neck jig removal jig or uh, torture device, whatever you may call it, while the frets are still on the guitar, I can heat up grandma's iron on the same plate, hot plate that I'm using to heat up the teapot right now and set it on here and then heat up some pallet knives and break the, the glue loose underneath the part of the fingerboard that extends onto the body. Of course, I'm going to tape this off and I'm going to try to break that loose with hot knives before I steam up. So let me go back to the bench and we'll look down on this and I'll explain this part to you. But no, you're not crazy. And besides that, if you are seeking psychological advice from me. There is a huge problem, son. Okay, let's get back to the bench and I'll show you this part, which is you're going to refret the whole neck and therefore this will be a little bit easier until you refret the neck. Then you will cuss me. Let's go. Okay, so we're back over here. We're going to slip these off and put them in a place where it's easy to get to because we're going to be coming right back to them, I think. If I would prepare myself just a little bit better. Okay. There we go. This comes off. So, this is not the case in every guitar. Oh, by the way, if you hear that noise in the background, it's the teapot right here. But... In some cases, there is a piece of wood under the fingerboard that comes over partly. Uh, sometimes it's attached to the fingerboard, it's glued. Sometimes the fingerboard is not glued, but this time it is glued. Now, what we don't want to do is mess up the finish any more than we have to. So you've seen this before. I've got this really cool tape dispenser. It has rubber feet on it and different color of tape here. You want to remember when I pull the back off, I'm going to use a couple different colors of tape and mark a mark where this lines up with this, but we'll get to that. So what I want to do here is I'm going to be prying on the neck up here with some palette knives. And I want to make sure that I've got this sealed off. If you're working on somebody's expensive guitar, you want to make sure you want to know what the tackiness, there's grades of this tape, like painter's tape, there's blue, there's this color, there's white color. But you want to remember, heat and adhesive can combine to really mess up somebody's irreplaceable guitar so we're just working on junky arch tops here that me doing the work and damaging them actually improves the condition but anyway you want to do that first and again this is an excellent excellent tape dispenser especially if you're doing binding jobs now I've shown you granny's iron uh, this actually plugs in I'm afraid of it 
but it will sit on a hot plate. And you basically take pallet knives. These are artist pallet knives. Got a big one here, got one here. You can tell they're heat scorched. And then remember I made this one when I was redoing the kerfing or repairing kerfing on the uh, Bonneville junk pile over the link up there. But anyway, it just goes into the edge right here. See how far that goes in. I don't want it going all the way in because then you've got braces and stuff and a hot knife may knock those loose. But anyway, I am going to just take the teapot off of the hot plate here. You see that? I've got it heated up and ready to go. We finally get this part done. And I am just going to put my palette knives on the... I'm too lazy to move it right now. And I really don't want to mess with the camera. But I, trust me on this. I'm putting this on top of the palette knives, which are sitting on a hot plate. Let me warm those up for a minute. Okay, a little bird told me that I want to want to get this guitar nice and flat and stabilized maybe with a little downward angle this way where when I go to work with these pallet knives yeah they're hot you want to be careful see that you hear that I'm just gonna start working this and try to get it in wherever I can Ooh, there look see that glue is just coming loose right away you don't want to force it and you want to have a couple of these so, you can take one and keep that gap there that you have like this. And just remember, wherever this is, if you put this hot knife down on this finish, it's going to scorch it. So, I'm just going to take this and just be very gentle and come up to edge. Take a break when you need to. Put the palette knives here or... You can expedite the process by taking the iron and heating up the frets, which you're going to have to remove anyway. By setting the iron on there, the frets will transfer the heat down into the wood. And I just simply do a little bit of that while I'm heating up my pallet knives again. Be careful. Things can get out of control quickly here. We're not looking to start a fire. We're looking to heat this up and pry this loose. Once this is loose, the steam will go down, the neck will come off easier. Trust me on that one. But by putting the iron on there, I am going to loosen up the glue or whatever is here. Again, remember, I am going to refret the neck. Voila, and I am going to raise the neck up. So these skinny little frets aren't going to do anything for me on this brand new what is it 80 year old guitar by the time I'm done don't forget this little gadget real handy I have to bend the fret wire remember because this as I showed you was radius just a tad okay as you can see here I'm already up to there this is loose here and I can basically spin my palette knife all the way around. It's hanging up a little bit right underneath here, which tells me that is where this is. And sometimes there's a little bit of glue or whatever hanging up there. I don't want to pry this so hard that I take that fret slot with the fret missing out of it and pop this up to the point where it breaks that off. It wouldn't matter because I'm going to glue this something like this on underneath, but I just don't want to do that. So again, I've taken heat and now I don't have to worry about the steam and what it's going to do to the fretboard underneath. Now we can get back to where we were. Okay, you want to remember when you're filling your steam uh, pot or your teapot, you want steam, not water. So if you fill it to the top, you're not going to have that much steam. So half full, something like that. So we've got this back on. Remember the pressure 
needs to be right here, not pressing down on the arch top. We've got the T-handle with the screw that, or the nut bolt that pushes up. Again, I did an episode about how to build one of these. Check that out. But once we get the steam going in here, check it out. Remember, you're dealing with steam. Can you see that? It's steaming. I like steaming. Okay, here we go. And we're going to work this for a little bit here and there, both holes. Hopefully at some point the steam will start to come out of this somewhere. Now that we've cut this loose, it may be right there. But in any event, the glue that's in here is going to start to heat up and cut loose. Now, People, you'll see people doing this on guitars that have a sound hole and they'll say, oh, you've got to stuff rags in there and all this kind of thing. Well, you can't do that with F holes and I certainly didn't want to take the back of this thing off and do it that way because I have to put pressure on things. So, I'm going to start to wiggle this a little bit and see what happens. Again, this is warm. The bird towel is a snowbird so it likes it where it's warm in the winter time and other time wasting nothingness what we're kind of looking for is the steam to start coming out of the opposite hole or around the edges and when we see that we know things are cutting loose and I can start to turn the handle up. Let me raise this up a little bit. I want to be real easy with this. That's for sure. All right, let's take the teapot off of this and give this neck pulling jig a little turn or two. Look at that. Easy money. Okay, while we are here, it's got a number on it on the inside of the neck, 480, which matches the number inside the body. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, pretty much of a mess. I got a bunch of stuff to clean up here now, and we are going to let this dry out because it took, it took a, a ton of steam to get this to cut loose. Um, then I'll pull the body uh, apart, pull the back off, but mission accomplished. Everything's still in several pieces, just like when I got it. And uh, yeah, I used a piece of a Marvel Mystery oil, oil can as a buffer in between the body and this here. So time to let this dry out a little bit it is soaking wet all right guys there we go this is the ugliest most beautiful thing i have ever seen you want to remember that this guitar is about 80 years old and i learned a couple things about how harmony put these together first off i've seen something i've not seen too much of before and that is there is a number on the neck that matches the number on the inside of the body and that number is 960. You want to remember that um, in the first episode, where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer, now that I'm not backwards, that I did in the playlist up here, um, link is right up there right about now, that 
there were some jobbers that made these Galliano guitars, one of them being Oscar Schmidt, and then again Oscar Schmidt started selling off things to save their zither and auto harp business, and they sold off the Stella brand to Harmony, and Harmony started making this stuff. Most of the Galliano guitars that you're going to see are parlor size flat tops with sound holes, so this was kind of a, I think, end of the game deal where they put uh, Harmony on to making something that's a typical body like we see, but that headstock is awesome. Now, I've got some really, really good uh, equipment to put on here. I never did like gold uh, packages much, but I think that with this headstock being the way it is, that's what I'm going to go to. I've got some cleanup to do here. Uh, this hadn't been touched before it came off. It took a while to get off. It was stubborn. Um, the fingerboard is intact. Again, I'm going to replace the frets. I gave you a couple of ways to look at how you want to get the neck off, depending on whether you're going to refret or anything. Now, I've told you that I take a piece of shim, match it up identical to the neck pocket like this, and then there's some curving and angles. So I want to get this to where it's pitched up just a little bit and get about this much underneath it. That'll give me a really, really good break angle, and I'll be able to do... Um, some good stuff. I have to take the back of this off and one of the things that attracted me about this guitar Believe it or not is look how trashed this is. I have to take the back of this off and There was a tone bar. You ever see a tone bar? It's not ladder bracing and all that. It is running up and down uh, the K's the big K's like uh, the restaurant junk pile I did that I put 57 Gibson pickups in for Troy Mura is right there. But yeah, so we're going to be able in the next episode, take a look at what I'm going to do once I get this off. There's cracks. This looks like split everywhere. Uh, and the top is caved a little bit right here. But we're going to do a lot of work on the inside of this. And it's still going to look terrible at the end, but people are going to be like, Wow, you put a pair of Grover Imperials on that. Yeah, the pickup will be choice. And anyway, it's just what I do. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, I think it's cool when you start saving instruments that are uh, 70, 80, and 90 years old. I certainly don't put my grandparents out on the iceberg because they're not functional. And it worries me that some of the old men of the trade that do what we do when they're gone um yeah we're gonna lose something so anyway i love working on these old guitars this one is tore up from the floor up and i will see you in the next episode when we go to work on this body give me a like and a subscribe if you haven't and i will see you soon thanks for watching